Well, I'm starting today's journey on the motorbike at the end of the last episode I did looking at the uh, ruins of Wien Kung Kam, uh, neglected for so many years and sadly uh, looking in a sorry state now. Uh, I'm driving on my bike so I can show you something a little bit nearer the ground than a car and give you a bit more reality. Well, I'm actually trying to see number four and number five. And number four and number five here is um, a bit difficult, ridden all the way down the lane. Uh, I didn't see any evidence of a sign, uh, so um, I missed it. But uh, talking to the ladies here, they say somebody's built over. Don't pour and no help. Cap. What ku ton po? Sadly, uh, it is no more. Um, the house was built on the land, and the road covers what Gary Harbottle Johnson says is the Vihan. Uh, he says in his book, Site 4, What ku ton po? Uh, the very narrow lane, well camouflaged between two houses. At first it's, uh, it's surfaced, but soon deteriorates into a muddy gravel track. Uh, the unexcavated ruins of the Vihan uh, lie directly below the lane, and uh, there is much evidence of broken bricks. Well, I never saw it, but I have come to site number five. Well, there's no QR flyover code for this one. Uh, I take it that uh, the Fine Arts Department didn't uh, think that this was worthy. But, uh, well, this area used to be a mound with a big Maglure tree. Uh, I don't know what a Maglure tree is. Uh, the Department of Fine Arts did an excavation and restoration in 99 through to 2000 and found that the temple comprised of a Vihara and a Chedi and wall. At the back of the Vihara was a pedestal which showed evidence of two constructions, one on top of the other. A special aspect of the temple was that the first step of the front stairway was built with bricks in a half circle shape. Uh, there was also another stairway in the north of the pedestal. Uh, what is left of the Chedi is only the base which shares with the Vihara. This type of two tiers of unadorned bases, everything on top of the lotus base is gone. It says here, west of the Chedi, a trace of the wall was found. This remaining part is six metres long. Important artefacts found from the excavation were pieces of the limed Buddha images, pieces of the bronze Buddha images and a bronze miniature Chedi. From its architectural style, this temple is dated 16th to 17th centuries AD. I've got Gary Harbottle Johnson's book here, and uh, he shows me a rather drier version of life. And he said that uh, he located the same track as Watku Tonpo, 
uh, at May 2002, his visit, uh, a great deal of brick robbing appeared to have been recently done and removed bricks were stacked neatly behind the chedi. Well, the Vihan floor has been resurfaced with modern bricks bearing dates 2000. Uh, it is hoped that the original bricks were removed to assist the restoration of another site. Uh, named Maglua after the tree which grows near the Vihan and was dated at 16th century Lana style. At some time, the base of the Vihan base was extended to include the Chedi to ease the merit-making ceremony of walking around the temple. Well, here we see in the foreground this uh, semicircular uh, step feature. I really felt sorry for uh, the people I was uh, chatting to up there. Uh, all their homes have been flooded at this last uh, week. I came here last week trying to follow up on some of these uh, uh, ruins to try to build um, a, a video uh, view for you and uh, it was inundated all over. You, you, you found it uh, near on impossible to drive between two uh, temples. Uh, there was a main road through but uh, you couldn't actually get off to some of the side roads. The people here are having to throw much of their rubbish out uh, because it's just all been waterlogged and um, spoilt. It smells horrible. But, um, this is Wienkum Cam and it's near to the Ping River and the Ping River does flood. Lovely br brickwork that has been redone uh, here and the cement uh, is obviously restoration work done 1999 through to 2000 and we see the, the circular columns here so we can only presume there would have been a roof. Well what 3A, the site 3A in Gary Harbottle's uh, book is just over there where that lady's passing now and this is the outer road down the east side of the border of Wien Kum Kam and this road is representative of the border now as we see it. In the fields here there have been in the past some relics and possibly that little embankment over there, who knows, um, of the east wall and it would have been contemporary with uh, the uh, King Ming Rai's occupation here. So all that we can see right now is uh, you know, banana plantation, people's houses and maybe a bank that is silt that was pulled out of the river there at some stage in the whatever year but possibly part of the wall, who knows. But here's the uh, you know the canal that runs along here and maybe that's part of the old rampart that existed way back when but now you can see that people have built very nice houses and uh, there are some municipal buildings on this boundary too. This in Gary Harbottle Johnson's book is referred to as Site 6 and Site 6 he actually talks about the the walls around the uh, circumference of the old uh, Wiang, the uh, fortified city and this is the east side.
Well, in Gary Harbottle Johnson's book, this is uh, site number eight. And today it looks much like it was a couple of weeks ago when I came around here and uh, the sun was shining a little bit more. The water was forming a, a perimeter and uh, it looked pretty sad. But it's looked sad for many decades, hundreds of years. Well, this is the Chiang Mai Fine Arts Department sign and uh, it relates to Wat Ku Mai Song. And on the map, we are here. And where I've brought you to this morning uh, has been uh, coming down here. And uh, we went into, into here. Wat Ku Mai Song was earlier a mound in a rice field. The Department of Fine Arts did an excavation and restoration in 89 to 90. The word ku means chedi, and my song is a kind of tree grown in the area. Well, the temple comprised of a porch of the main gate in the north and traces of a wall in the north and the east. From the porch, there was a brick pathway leading to the stairway of the Vihara. The Vihara was rectangular in shape with an indented corners. The chedi was situated behind the Vihara and only had a square base with indented corners remained. Inside, near the porch, was an octagonal base of a chedi. Important artefacts found from the excavation were a cranial protuberance of the bronze Buddha image, a bronze spoon, terracotta Buddha tablets, sandstone stupa of Payao, art school and a brick inscription with Lana alphabets. The temple can be dated to the 16th and 17th centuries. Here's the chedi, here's the vihan, here's another chedi and you can see that the chedi is actually attached. There's no walkway between. Uh, it hasn't shifted sideways. Uh, it was part of the structure uh, of the vihan itself. And you can see here relics of current use whereby people come along and make votive offerings and light candles on occasions and burn jupe essence joysticks in 1970s language. Referring back to Gary Harbottle Johnson's book, he said this temple is inside the southeast of Wienkum Kam and consists of a southern chedi, vihan, and a rectangular base of another chedi. You can see the other chedi at the far end. The main temple entrance is in the north, which is paved. Path leads to the Vihan. Behind the Vihan is a bell-shaped chedi, estimated as 15th to 16th century. That's AD, by the way. And on an indented rectangular base. The Buddha image platform inside the Vihan is offset to the west and may indicate that the platform was extended at some point. There are bases for six round pillars to support the roof. Uh, and I'm just looking here at Gary's plan uh, drawing here that he's made and he's referring to the offset here and also his lines around the uh, outside, the wall. He suggests that it could well have extended out to the east over here and well it's not those houses but into this swampy boggy area this is very good to walk on and uh, it's great for the birds to bring up their catches and eat their snails well, there's lots of them here and there's a remnant of a scorpion I'm walking on shells of snails that have been brought up by the birds. Um, you can see that it's, uh, uh, this is the entrance and you can see that the, uh, the altar where the Buddha images up there are placed now, today in 2022, uh, that's offset over to the one side. So maybe there was something on, on the left hand side, maybe it was uh, an afterthought. I, I, I don't understand as to why it's off-centre, but, it, but it, it is. And maybe they've interpreted it wrong in the uh, rebuild. Maybe it has been constructed uh, in the renovation uh, slightly different to the original. So here we are down at number eight. Uh, we're going quite fast today, aren't we? <laughs> um, I've knocked off so many today because these are the ones that you 
can hardly see. There's not a lot of detail here uh, about them uh, to, to actually see. And uh, one, I've even not uh, seen it at all because it's been built over. Number seven is on the other side of the 700 year road, the middle ring road, uh, opposite to Global House. But it's not inside the walled area, um, so I'm not taking you there today. There is somewhere uh, over there, tucked away, uh, an old relic of a temple. I'm going to find it this week. I've still not found it. Um, I haven't been looking very seriously either, but um, I'm going to go there this week and find it. So that'll be in the next video. Um, I've come to number eight now on Gary's list, so we've gone through from four through to eight today uh, so far, and I like this one. It looks nice. It's got a pleasant feel about it. Yeah, what? Ku Mai Song. Back on the bike, I'm going to take you to a, a couple more and introduce you to a bit of old stuff. These are relatively new. These are 15th, 16th century. So um, let's go to some really old stuff. dear. Well, I'm right bang in the middle of a, a modern housing, uh, housing estate uh, here. And uh, I've got a remnant of a chedi by the look of it. I'm trying to make out from the information I have with looking at the book of Gary Harbottle Johnson. And I'm not too sure as to whether I'm at number nine or ten. Let me have a look at the map. Because when we look at these photos, it's very hard to actually understand what I'm looking at. So, uh, number nine is Wat Ku I C, and I don't think that's this one. I think I'm at Wat Ku Lab Moy, um, assessed by a dirt lane running north from Wat Ku Mai Song. Um, that's where I've come from. Bad driving, gum boots. Uh, you will get um, wet. And it says that approaching from the south, Site 8 offers a, an easy access. Look for the road sign. For, no, 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 no. There appears to be remains of a chedi, vihan, and another structure, but in 2002 I could not access them to verify this. So this is looking possibly that this is what it's referring to, this one here. So I think I'm at Watku Lab Moy. So I think accessing number nine stroke 10, is one for a dry season. 
Oh, there's a big toad there. Look at that big toad. Hello. Oh, there's lots of spawn on the wall. Lovely pink stuff. There's lots of it along here. So I'm going to brave walking back through this moist path. In a recent video I did at Doi Dao, uh, I didn't show you, but um, I slipped and fell over and got completely covered in mud in, uh, in the video I was making. I, I considered putting it in, but um, it was so bad that um, I decided not to. Well, from my boggying, boggy investigation at the last place, I now uh, can deduce that I'm at Watku Aisai, I see, and uh, therefore that last one was definitely uh, Watku Lab Moi. I have to go back there in the dry season. Okay, I'm across. Let's see what these guys say here. So once again, we've got a plaque by the uh, Chiang Mai Fine Arts Department. There's no flyover video with this one. And uh, Wat Ku uh, I see the temple located at the center of Wien Kung Kam and the south of Wat Hoi Nong. Uh, the temple is called by the local people uh, Ku I see, which means a chedi, and I see is the name of the landlord who owns the area where the temple is situated. So named after the landlord. There has currently been no information on the background of this temple found in any historical records. The fine arts department excavators restored the temple in 2099 to, to, through to 2001. The temple consists of Chedi, situated at the rear of the Vihara, which faces towards the east. The Chedi and the Vihara were built twice in addition, there is another non-excavated ruin situated to the southern side of the Vihara. The temple is general, is devastated and invaded by the people. It is assumed that other architectures and structures may have been covered by earth. This temple was one of the important monastery of Wien Kung Kam. It has been dated 16th, 17th century. Well, having said there's no historical records and blah, 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 how can they say that? Things get lost in translation, I'm sure. Um, you know, when you read some of these things and it says this is uh, at the centre and this was important, then on the other hand, they say there's no record of it. Um, how can you say that it was important if there was no record of it? I'm going to read a little bit from Gary Harbottle's book uh, here uh, because because I find that uh, what he says uh, is an interesting sometimes um, juxtaposition of what the fine arts people say and sometimes it reinforces it. So who knows? Let me read it. It says, the rather uninspiring uh, site carries its name from the people whose land the site is on. That's confirmed over there. It shows a vihan facing east uh, with a chedi behind it and there is a further unexcavated building to the south of the Vihan. He must have read the same sign. The temple was built at least twice. From the current architecture and artifacts found at the site, it was dated the 16th century. The Vihan floor was resurfaced with uh, year 2000 bricks during the excavation as part of the restoration and protection work. Right, so these are 2000, uh, year 2000 bricks. Uh, in our centuries. Um, south of the site, uh, the road becomes unsurfaced and overgrown, giving difficulties to access, accessing Site 10. Well, I know. I've been trying to access Site 10 and it's really, really difficult. They've built new houses there. Um, site 8 and 13 would indicate uh, that there was a thorough thoroughfare running north-south through Wien Kum Kam. So what Gary is saying here is was it that road? I don't know. But there was a road going uh, north-south here uh, through this part of Wien Kum Kam. And therefore, this could have been an important part on the journey through the main road, which then further suggests there could have been a gate at the south side 
but there's no evidence of that. So it could be that, that like we see in the modern city of Chiang Mai, whereby there's a northeast southwest gate, maybe there was a gate here to the south and this was the road that was leading to it. There's a man selling ice cream. And you can see here that these are bricks stamped in modern date. This is 2543 or year 2000 in the Gregorian calendar. So here we can see the pillars, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a brick uh, and a stone. And there's something going on over here. And yeah, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Sadly, uh, not a lot of information is understood about this uh, from reading the sign there or uh, reading Gary Harbottle Johnson's book as to uh, anything more than I've told you. Some of the building structure here is really, really poor, uh, poorly maintained. And it is a real shame because if it was in the main thoroughfare and if it was so important because it was in that main thoroughfare, then sadly uh, it has been um, lost to time. Yeah, like so much around here been lost to time. Well, now I've brought you today from here and come to eight, and then we found nine and ten, well, part of ten, and we've just left number nine, site number nine. Well, if you travel up this road, you come to uh, site number 11, 12, and 13. They are all uh, lumped together in the one area, the site, 11, 12, 13. And they're referred to in Gary Harbottle's book as uh, Wat Hua Nong. And they are split into three. So we've got uh, Wat Hua Nong, south, northwest, and northeast. Well, I've come to this site uh, with a purpose of ending this video, uh, this particular episode. I want to take you through uh, this particular temple's uh, area, uh, this complex, these three temples, all in the same, um, all in the same ground space. Um, in the next video, I hope you've enjoyed having a meander around uh, Wien Kum Kam with me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the the footage that I could show you uh, on the streets, and also hopefully you'll appreciate the torture the people have been through this last week or so with the uh, flooding 
that's gone on here. Uh, renovations and the changes in uh, land levels or, um, you know, the construction efforts that have gone on over the years uh, between now and uh, 2011 and previously to that. We don't know whether it's worse, but it has been bad. And when I have toured around Wien Kum Kam and seen all of the flooding and the sadness uh, that you see in people's homes, <sighs> it really makes you think about, you know, 12 to 13, 14, 1500s here, what it must have been like. It must have been terrible because, you know, there were no pumps, there were no, uh, there was no communication as we know it today, and it must have been devastating for people. Hence, they had to rebuild, hence they had to move and refocus where they um, held their centre of administration. Anyway, I wish you well. Thanks for watching this one and the other videos. I'll leave a link above uh, to the other videos I've made in this series and uh, talking about Wien Kum Kam, the Atlantis of Lana. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.